Admiral's Log, August 5th, 1901. In the heart of a Russian spring, amidst the thawing snow and burgeoning hope, our motherland breathes a sigh of relief and pride. The recent triumphs of our heavy cruiser Europa and her steadfast companion, the light cruiser Kuban, have resurged a wave of nationalistic fervor and reinstated the honor of our navy in the eyes of the world. The Europa, a phoenix risen from the ashes of our previous despair, has become a symbol of our renewed naval prowess. Her steel-clad form and the valor of her crew have vanquished two of Japan's heavy cruisers, a feat of tactical brilliance. The scars of battle, worn with pride, were but brief impediments, a mere month in the docks for repairs, and she was back on the high seas, her resolve unshaken. Her subsequent engagement, a daring confrontation that saw the downfall of the Japanese battleship Chigusa, has etched a new chapter of glory in our naval history. The waves themselves seem to whisper tales of this victory, echoing from the docks of St. Petersburg to the far reaches of the Siberian plains. This string of successes has not only rallied the spirits of our people, but has kindled a flame of confidence in the heart of our Tsar. The shadow of defeat that once loomed over us has been dispelled, replaced by a luminescent beacon of hope and expectation. The Tsar, once fraught with doubt and thoughts of conceding, now stands reassured of our naval capabilities, his faith in my command rejuvenated. As we set our sights on future battles, the weight of expectation rests heavily upon us. Yet, it is a burden we carry with honor and readiness. The Europa and Kuban, more than mere vessels of war, are now beacons of Russian tenacity and resilience. Their recent victories are not just triumphs of firepower, but symbols of a resurgent Russia, unyielding in the face of adversity. With the motherland's gaze upon us and the Tsar's confidence renewed, we sail forth into uncertain waters, yet with a certainty in our hearts. The seas may be unforgiving and the enemy unrelenting, but the spirit of the Russian Navy is unbreakable. We stand ready, for each victory is not just a conquest of territories, but a conquest of the doubts that once shackled our potential. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 4. There's been a national revolution. Unrest became uncontrollably high. The government has been overthrown. Thankfully, it is my naval prestige that has saved me. I can remain in my position in as Admiral-in-Chief of the Navy. My naval prestige isn't exactly spectacular, but it is just enough to keep me in office for a while longer. So, the situation with Japan hasn't changed much, but the situation with other territories has changed a lot. Over here, we've had Kamchatka. Kamchatka had um, a bit of an uprising. I tried to squash it with a couple of destroyers, but it was for naught. Kamchatka and all of its income, resources and everything is no longer part of Russia. So, the port of Petropavlovsk, which is no small port, it's 57,000 tons, you can park like five heavy cruisers there, is no longer part of the Russian Empire. Can I get this back? I don't know. Perhaps. But it's not something I can heavily influence right now. It does mean I have uh, <laughs> one fewer port to defend here. It also means my monthly balance is now doing extremely poorly. So I'm going to have to try and, well, save money somewhere. I've been rebuilding my transport fleet at the expense of my tech budget and crew training. But this is going to cost me so much that, uh, well, I'm going to have to save money somewhere. And by the looks of it, I'll be broke. Like, really broke. In about two months. If I reduce transport capability to zero, or transport capacity, I'm going to be actively demolishing my fleet, which is unacceptable. Um, there will be no research, there will be no crew training, and in two months, we're going to be bust. So I have to do something. And I think that trying to sue for peace with Japan might work. And here's why. 
if I can push the government to end hostilities with Japan, I might be able to get a bunch of money from them, which could keep the nation afloat, or at least the navy, for a while. The problem is, at the same time, if I do go to peace, we're going to go to a peace economy, not a war economy, which means that my naval budget is severely reduced. Really, really badly. So that's not really something that I'm trying to pursue. What I can do to save money in the short run is start scrapping ships that I no longer feel are valuable to the Navy, which is the Speedski class. Um, I'm going to just... Can I scrap multiple of these? Yes. I'm going to start scrapping torpedo boats because I find that they're not that useful. This is, however, not really going to move the needle that much. If I want to save some serious money, I'm going to have to do that by capitalizing slash cannibalizing the most expensive ships, which, of course, are the battleships. Um, you're on... C what? What do you mean you're on sea control? No, 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 no. You're in being. One of these things is suspended... Hold on. So if you're refitting a ship and you suspend it, it starts costing you nothing? That's an interesting exploit. Now what I'd hate to do is just scrap a whole bunch of battleships. Mothballing them might work, but it's not necessarily what I need right now um where do we not have conflicts right now like the black sea is pretty quiet so i can uh, mothball this ship it's going to save me a couple million another one of the black sea fleet's going to get mothballed so no battleship presence there we got a couple of uh, ships in the baltic if i can keep one active battleship there that's going to have to do for now so you're mothballed and you're mothballed. <clears throat> it is going to take a while to get these ships back online. Uh, so they better not start a fuss over in the Baltic. Because re-engaging them or restarting the crew training and everything, that will take a while. Oh boy. Well, I managed to draw it out to three months. Um, but I think I might go broke. I am working on refitting a bunch of ships, so my shipyards are busy. My shipyards are also busy for building ships for abroad. If there are any orders for ships that are requested by nations abroad, by all means, I will happily take those orders, and I will happily, happily let my shipyards work for other nations. Yes, 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 yes. They would like to buy... The Avsetrov. Yeah, sure. I'll take the 80 million. Um, it is not exactly selling it with a... Well, with a profit. Um, and selling a battleship when you're at war is not necessarily a great situation to be in. But I need every bit of money I can get right now. Now, the fleet, like I said, is being modernized. So some of these ships are refitting. Which makes them extremely expensive right now. This is something that I can pause, and that might just give me a bit more breathing room. There. Now it's going to cost me nothing, which is weird. I'd say that the crews still have to get paid. The Russian Navy apparently disagrees, so yeah, interesting. Um, we're now only minus 30 million, so I can, <laughs> I can keep drawing this out. But soon we'll not have any ships. However... I do have new ships, and they're over here in Moscalvo. We have the new group of the Archangel class heavy cruisers. That's the one with eight, uh, eight inchers, a bunch of three inchers, and seven underwater torpedo launchers. I have all five of them over here. So this means that now that they're commissioned, I can send all of these guys out. A few months have now passed. And one of the only battleships that I still have over here, battleship, uh, sorry, battleship Chesmo. It's the modernized version of the Admiralsky of Cetro, 
So it's the better one. Uh, she's going up against the Suwo. Zuikaku class, like we've seen before. A couple of escorts. I also have escorts. These are the Zvonkis. So they are the better DDs. And ideally, they'll be able to put this thing ablaze. Or torpedo it. But torpedo ranges are very limited. So this is mostly going to be a battleship fight. There might be some other, let's say, skirmishes. But accuracy in this era is quite bad. So if I'm going to try and hit something small <laughs> in a fog, it had better be close. Now the enemies to the south. Let's keep the... Oh, it's a legendary Cuban. Cuban. I've seen this ship before. She did fantastically well. I'm going to tell you to follow the battleship. We're going to have two screening sections. That is fine. Why is everybody moving at a snail's pace? Six knots? Three knots? That's really slow, boys. Let's speed things up, shall we? And go find the enemy. And there they are. Eleven and a half clicks out. Chesma opens up. Let's see if these longer barrels can actually do anything useful. Slow the ship down a bit. Try to get to cruise speed. With that, to get even more accuracy bonuses. And, uh, well, hope that not everybody is hiding in the smoke screen of these escorts. Because that would make acquisition, not only just visual acquisition, but then target acquisition a heck of a lot more difficult. That is not the target. That is a heavy cruiser with 7.2 inch guns. We can take this guy out. That'd be fantastic news for the smaller ships. It's only 10 clicks out. I can see this, but not the battleship. Really? This does have me concerned for the amount of ships that are potentially very close to my current position. And that due to well, either smoke screens or fog or both, I simply cannot see. I hope, I hope, I hope that this ship and all of its secondaries are capable of dealing with smaller ships as they happen to come close. But I can't quite tell yet. Let's go for armor piercing. Look at that accuracy. About 7%. 8%. That is actually really good. Can this thing hurt me at all? I bet it can. Yeah. Bow compartment. 11%. Ooh. Are we going to get it? No, we're not. If only. The target does appear to be coming directly for me. At what point do these four inches open up? Seven clicks. Oh, the secondaries from the battleship have opened up. No. Sorry, that was the primaries, I think. Yeah, some of the four inches are now in range. These four inches have better... Better range than the four inches on my DDs. Okay, this screening section is now engaging the, the heavy cruiser. I applaud their enthusiasm. I think it is, however, somewhat misplaced, because against this, I don't really want to fight. Not with a DD, and definitely not up close. Because this thing has 16 4-inchers, which is as much as four of my DDs combined. That is not really something I choose to fight against. There's the battleship at 10 clicks. If the heavy cruiser Tengu wants to sacrifice itself, then by all means... Oh, Jesus, you're a different div. Oh, boy. You might want to smoke up and turn around now. Get out. Don't fight this. Fortunately, their accuracy... Hold on, their secondaries aren't even locked on? Oh, you can't see me. Now you can. Now you can. Accuracy for the battleship is still not spectacular, but that is only because I am suffering from my own ricochet. Oh, sorry, from my own recoil. Alright, this battle line... This battle line is a bit of a mess. No, you're not part of the Cubans, Div. Must have dragged them over accidentally. You're now following Mechislav. Alright. The Vicarus Tengu is on fire. But beyond that, seems to have taken no damage. Bonk. Runs right into the light cruiser. Can we get a hit, please? Because I trust that these 11-inch guns 
will show that ship what's what. Because we really should be able to pen this. Yeah, look at that. The whole belt. Ironically, we can't pen the deck. Right. This is a really thin skin. Oh, hold on. Tengu. Yeah, that's quite a lot of deck armor. Or a heavy cruiser in 19-2. That is a heck of a lot of deck armor. Does this thing come with... Oh, yeah, it comes with torpedoes, too. I don't quite get why the AI sacrifices this ship. I welcome it, because it means I can take this guy out pretty easily. And then work over all their friends. Let's see if my shells will recoil... No, not recoil. Uh, bounce off of the ship. Ricochet. 11% accuracy. About three and a half clicks out. Here comes Vonky. Very aggressively rushing the Tengu. Tengu launched against the Zvonki. Good thing I'm not going to be there anymore. There's the battle. No, that's a light cruiser. Uh oh. Battleship fires. 13% chance to hit. And there you go. Flooding on the ship. Maximum bulkheads and spacious quarters gives this thing a lot of survivability. Hold on, this needs some intervention. <clears throat> or the Orfe is going to get hit. I've noticed a few times now that Zvonki has taken shots and they just ricocheted off the ship, which I think for a DD is pretty impressive. This DD does not have a lot of armor. You, get back here. Uh, just rejoin the other div. Tengu has taken on some water. That's going to further isolate her from the main battle group. She now no longer can do her 17 knot speed, which is pretty bad to begin with. She's doing 13 knots, which will also... Holy moly, look at that accuracy. That'll make her easier to hit. By a huge margin. 50% chance to pen. And we're about to find out if we can actually hit with 90% chance. And then pen and cause significant damage to this heavy cruiser. Yes, there it is. Destroyed main tower. That's going to really hamper their damage control efforts. Their accuracy not yet impaired. But they're not having a good time. That's for sure. Damage wise... Oh, pretty impressive amount actually came out of the 4-inch guns. Cuban hasn't done that much. Ah, there's the smaller stuff. That's where the DDs are at. Normally when a DD pops up at about 4 kilometers, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. In this situation, I don't think I am. Because that DD can't torpedo me yet. It can torpedo me at 3 clicks. So I'm going to have to take measures after I fire this salvo to prevent that. That was awful. That was better. Secondaries on this DD start turning. Ammo detonation aboard Tengu. There's another good pen. From a 4 inch? From the CL. That's really impressive. I did not expect a CL to go through a heavy cruiser like that. We've inflicted some damage over here to the destroyer. That's currently rushing the Chesma. Chesma is struggling to get up to speed. There she goes. That is one expensive heavy cruiser. Orfei, come back here. Alright, the rest of the DDs are currently disengaging. That's a nice torpedo you got there. Oh, not one. Hold on, you're gonna turn towards the DD. Oh boy. This is going to be... Well, we're gonna have to use this gap. Or I'm going to have a very interesting next couple of minutes. All back emergency. Stop. Steady. Make turns. I'm clear of that aft torpedo. Now I wreck the engine. Come on, blade yourself. Yeah, I think we're good. No, we're not good. Damn it, that hit the stern. I thought I'd... I had it. But that hit the stern of the battleship. And that dud is very, very, very lucky. Could we please hit this DD? 
We got about 5% chance to hit. Come on. If the Suwa is not interested in fighting, I am perfectly fine with that because I don't need her to intervene in this fight. I need to get rid of the small stuff first. And then I can start dealing with the battleship. Because if the small stuff is gone, I can also make a heck of a lot more use of my DDs. There's the Orfe again. Ooh, close call there. We're definitely getting some damage in, but it takes 700 meters in order to actually get close enough to get accurate. <laughs> it's just really bad. This is why I tend to skip this era. Not a big fan of pre-dreadnoughts, like 1890, 1900s. I prefer my ships accurate. Accurate and ideally somewhat speedy. And <laughs> in this era, 26 knots is actually somewhat speedy. What are you shooting? The Ume, the lead. Okay. Bloody hell, dude. Focus fire on the Maikaze. I'm surprised the Cuban took two torpedoes and is still perfectly intact. I mean, she took three officially, but one of those was a dud. Blocked, blocked, blocked. Are you kidding? Are you shrugging off my high explosive? Oh, that didn't shrug off. Extensive fire on ADD. There's the Ume. I'm not sure why this battleship decides that it does not want to fight. It's an 80 million dollar battleship. It's cheaper than mine. But it's no slouch. It has guns. We've seen these things fight. They're capable ships. But hey. They don't want to fight. I'll take out their escorts and call it a day. Because I have not lost a ship yet. DD should be here pretty soon. Eight clicks. Orfe is already here. And Zvonki is something I completely forgot about. Oh, Jesus, that was a ton of damage. You're gone. End the battle. Good result. Look at that. 9,000 points. 9,000 points versus 89. They lost a heavy. They lost two DDs. You can keep your light cruisers. I'll keep all of my ships. Thank you very much. Um, it probably means I'm going to need, what, like mon maybe two months for repairs on the battleship? But that's perfectly survivable. I can do without the battleship for two months. It's no problem at all. Oh, now they want me to sign a peace treaty. Should we accept? No. I'm going to drag out some more favorable terms. Oh, that's light damage. It's not too bad. One month. Perfect. Um, I also want to try and inflict a heck of a lot of damage on the Russian... No, on the Japanese economy. Interestingly, Canada keeps ordering my battleships. They want to order a new one. Um, they're going to be, give me a total profit of 67%. And they're giving me an advance of 28 million, which is perfect, because that's about my expenses for a month. And then 161 million upon delivery. So, yes, off you go. Uh, they also want to buy the Rotislav. Look, I appreciate it, but I don't need you to... What is that thing on the right? What is that? Huh? You see that block that's currently over technology? It's like it's tied to my cursor. But only when I'm looking at this... Oh, it's on the left now. What is that? Anyway, no, you're not getting the road to Slav. You're not getting all my ships. We also have an ambush. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm the ambushed one by all of these destroyers. It could be an interesting opportunity to try and take a whole bunch of them out because they got few bulkheads. I have two Zvonkis. Let's do it. It's what, two versus seven? So I'd say about even. Well, it's not really even, but... Let's see what I can do. Let's see what I can do. If I can get a couple more thousand victory points, I'll happily take those. Enemy spotted to the south. To the south we shall go. These things need to stop appearing at 2km range. That is getting a little concerning. A little concerning. 
I'm going to slow down to about half speed. It's going to make the ships a lot more maneuverable. And I don't particularly care for their smokescreen. Let's see if they want to torpedo me. Because I am probably inside of their torp range already. Yeah, just about. Because they've got that 3 kilometer torpedo range. I'm kind of baiting their torps. Hoping that they'll do something. If they do... I should be maneuverable enough to dodge them. There we go. But that's one. And these... Oh, Jesus. There goes my torpedo launcher. Well, one of them. Oh. Not bad. Gromke has engine trouble. Yeah, see, that's a lot of torpedoes. Target this. Go back to full speed. This is... Yeah. I think we can get some damage in here. I think we can sink some DDs. But I'm not sure how much it's going to cost. And that's kind of the problem. I like how we cannot see each other, supposedly, but we're still targeting each other. Oh, the Gromki fixed her engine! Spectacular. Well done, guys. I was thinking that engine would be completely out. Like, completely lost. But it is not. Uh, Gromki, we're gonna do a drive-by. You and I. With your one torpedo launcher. Ooh, are you sure you wanna hug it out? Because I will abuse that mechanic. If the devs don't want me to abuse the mechanic, they should have fixed it. Look at that! Suddenly, 1100 damage because I'm targeting the ship behind it. This thing has been in the game for years now. And it just... <laughs> it just still works. Wow, you don't listen to your rudder, do you? That's a thing. Shinonome has no torps ready. The DD behind her might. The DD behind her, however, might not want to fire. Parcel pen. Oh! Gone. Extensive fire? Did I hit you that hard? Oh, no, never mind. They got a few bulkheads. So that makes them particularly vulnerable to extensive fire, flooding, the whole shebang. Because these things tend not to have real good damage control. So any damage that they take spreads. Kasumi could torpedo me here. Switch to Miyuki. Come on, gentlemen. I trust that we can do something. You torpedoed me just now. There it is. If you just keep cruising along, we should be fine. Go back to half speed. Complete your turn. Okay, how many more torpedoes do we have? We got eight there, we got eight there. And potentially eight more on the last DD. So let's see if I can do something about these guys before they get ready to launch again. It's making it very difficult to spot them. That's a torpedo suiciding. If I can hit one of them with a torpedo, that would cause immense amounts of damage. Potentially instantly flood them. Oh, opportunity here. Target this. Target that. Flooding on Shinonome instantly drops her speed. Go, 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 go. This is the time to shoot them. Right now. Shoot Shinonome. Get Miyuki for free. Go on. Oh, that's not the right target, but I'll take it. You just launched against me, did you? How rude. Increase to full speed. Steady as she goes, build your speed up. There it is. Target the Kasumi. So I've taken down two of their DDs. I think. <coughs> 
Kasumi's flooding badly. Accuracy should be going up. If only it wasn't for these things pitching up and down. Like they're just some sort of plaything on the waves with their, what, 80 pitch? Yeah, 88 roll. Ah, there goes the Kasumi. Excellent, gentlemen. Excellent. Well done. You're completely... Completely wrecking these Japanese ships. And I love it. Go for armor piercing both. Because a bit of flooding is more valuable than some fires right now. Come on. Ow. Now the mechanic was used against me. Don't torpedo them yet. It's like Miyuki doesn't even know where to go. Oh, now she does. You smoke? Because you're trying to target... Yeah, you're trying to target Gromki. So I'm going to use Creeping Smoke to try and have the Miyuki waste her shots on Gromki. While the Moskvichenin does the actual damage. But she's struggling. 10% chance to hit though. Come on. Ooh! That looked like it was right on target. 8% chance to hit. Increase the flank speed. Catch him. I love these little DD skirmishes. Come on. You gotta take this thing out before it reloads, because then we're gonna have to dance around the torpedo attack again. Smoke screens all over the place. Ah, there's the last one. Oh boy. I'm gonna have to get some distance now. Because at this point, Miyuki is about to torpedo me. And I might have been inside a torpedo range, but I don't trust my torpedoes to hit them. Um, unless I am absolutely point-blank range. You just sent all of them. Okay. Now we can charge you again. Now we can charge you again. Yes, there it is. Double flooding. Miyuki's down. You can't survive that. Not with a few bulkheads. You're gone. Next. Well done, gentlemen. Just two DDs taking down, so far, I think four of theirs. And the Hokaze might be trying to beat a retreat, which I'm perfectly fine with. I don't have to kill all of them. I have done quite a lot. And so, a situation that was already pretty bad for the Japanese, victory points wise, has gone worse. 4,500 points gathered by two destroyers. This is excellent. This is excellent. I still don't want to sue the Japanese for peace. I just want to make sure that I get an opportunity to have a go with their transports. I don't think I have the, the show of force for that. I need a lot of force projection, especially in the Sea of Japan, where most of their commerce is happening, and potentially here, if I want to make something happen. But this needs 329,000 points of power projection. I don't think I have that. I think everything combined here is 57k. So that's not a whole lot. Nevertheless, we pulled this war back. It looked pretty bad. It looked really, really like we we're going to have to, well, surrender to the Japanese. And now it is not. So I'm calling this an absolute win. And we'll see how the Japanese want to take this up. And how long we can engage the Japanese for with my fairly rapidly decreasing budget. So join me for the next one. And I'll see you guys there.